Let's cut the heart in half and look at the internal heart anatomy. So here it is, and this is an anterior view. When you're given a picture of the heart cut in half, typically it is the anterior view. However, we're gonna be looking at cow hearts in lab. You've gotta be able to learn to identify front and back. One helpful hint is looking, finding that apex, right? That's got that kind of pointy end down there compared to the base. Um, and then you're going to need to help help with the vessels, have help from the vessels and chambers to identify what is anterior and posterior. Um, so what I want to do first is name the four chambers that we've already named. Here again, we're looking at a patient. So here is their right side and here is their left side. So then you could name the four chambers, right? Got the right atrium, um, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. Separating all of these chambers, um, forming them are called what septum, septa. So here is a ventricular septum. The atrial septum is kind of hidden up there. Um, this is also a septum. And in the septum, um, there are going to be some holes, so valves. They're going to allow blood to pass through from one chamber to another. So I'll come back to those. Before that, I want to go back to starting with the right here and walk through these structures. So what did I just point to? That's the superior vena cava. Inferior is down there. That is draining blood, receiving blood from systemic circulation, deoxygenated blood, which is shown here in blue. So that comes into the right atrium, which then is going to pass through a valve just gonna name it valve for now, into the right ventricle. The right ventricle, fairly muscular, it's going to contract and cause blood to flow out through this valve into the pulmonary trunk, where it's gonna go pick up oxygen. It's going to the two lungs here, it's where it's the divide, divider is another valve that we have to go through. Every single chamber is isolated um, by from other chambers by valves and by the vessels. Blood goes off to the lungs and comes back from the lungs now with oxygen. It's going to come in here. So lungs, we could actually have this and there. Comes back and enters the through the pulmonary what? Veins. These are deoxygenated veins. I'm sorry, oxygenated veins. They contain oxygen even though they are veins. Entering the left atrium, we now have oxygen in our blood. The left atrium is going to hold the blood for a little bit, then it's going to travel through this valve to the left ventricle. Left ventricle is very muscular, very strong. It's going to contract and force blood out through the aorta. And I believe I actually have some of these that are going to pop up in a moment too with labels. Um, through another valve. The valve is hidden back here. There is a valve separating the left ventricle from the aorta as well. From the aorta is then going to go to the systemic arteries. Um, both an abdominal aorta that goes down and a ascending aorta that goes up. Okay, I do, I'm actually gonna erase, well, uh, let me see what, okay. Here are some other, the names of the valves. I'm gonna clear all this so we can see this better. So I told you there are these four valves. Here they are with names. These Two that separate the atria and ventricles are called AV valves, atrioventricular valves. Tricuspid has three pieces to it. We'll see that a better view in a moment. And the mitral valve is the other one, or bicuspid, it has two pieces to it left atrioventricular and right atrioventricular. So those AV valves have certain structures to them. You can see already um, some of these structures. I'm actually gonna name one more right now while we're talking about this. This right here, this is our papillary muscle. It 
it's a muscle that's going to pull down on these cords right here, which are called chordae tendinae. And these structures are going to be important for how these AV valves function. Then I already had this pop up. We had the we have these semilunar valves. That's the other two. The only one in the view here is the pulmonary semilunar valve. The other one is the aortic semilunar valve, not shown here because it's behind that trunk. And these, you can see, have a different structure to them. There's no chordae tendinae holding onto them or papillary muscles. They're going to work a little differently. I'll go over the valves in just a moment. First, let's do a learning check. So you can pause the video to fill this out and tell me which valve each of these applies to each of these. <laughs> 